What's up guys? I'm Travis and you're watching Upgraded RC. So I went ahead and opened up bag H and I got everything laid out here. And on this part's tree, you've got the front bumper with the fair leads. If you turn it to the other side, you've got your rear bumper and these four pieces in the center here are what you need to put together to create your sliders. And then on this part's tree, we have our battery tray along with the dig servo mount here. On this side, we've got the servo mount for our overdrive, the two flat pieces on either side of the frame. Moving on to this side, we've got our two inner fender wells here along with our battery straps. These are the LED covers. So on your rock lights here, if you're gonna install a rock light in here, if you have that LED package, go ahead and use this one for your cover. If you do not have the LED package, then go ahead and use this one right here to cover that hole up and keep some mud out maybe. Now it also came with a radiator, which I've taken the liberty to go ahead and paint a little bit of silver on there. I didn't do a great job, but um, it comes with the two fan blades here and the two fan shrouds that go over top of it. So that'll give it a little bit of a look. This is also a cross member. Now this little piece right here, these actually mount to the bottom of your battery tray right here. And what those are is those are wire routers. So you can route all your wires through there and keep everything nice and clean. Um, getting onto the hardware side, you've got two different size shafts you'll notice. The larger one right here, this is for your dig. And the smaller one is for your overdrive. These have the uh, M4 rod ends, the same ones we've been using, and the pivot balls. Go ahead and pop those in and screw them onto your rod and all your nuts and bolts. That's it. Let's go ahead and throw some of this together. Bag H went together pretty good, guys. The only hitch I had was right here on the back of the radiator. The fan blade and fan shroud that we went ahead and screwed to our radiator was rubbing on my wire for my servo. So I didn't want it to put a hole in it. I went ahead and took the fan blade and fan shroud off of that side, left the other one on the other side. I mean, it's just for looks anyway, guys. Uh, I did make use of the plastic wire harness or wire loom, whatever you want to call it, to run my servo wires underneath the battery tray and out. It came, came out great. That's about it. Bag H, the rest of it was pretty simple. Um, now you guys do know that I am running a Reefs Raw 500 servo for my steering. And I went ahead and went with these Power Hobby high quality servos for my dig and my shift. Now guys, these servos right here are full metal gears and they put out 160 ounces of pull. By the way, you only need 120 ounces of pull to go ahead and actuate your dig or your overdrive lever. So with 160, I've got plenty of pull out of these. They are full metal gears. They are not waterproof. They are water resistant, but that's okay. So I went with these, but you know how much these were? These were only $19 a piece for these 160 ounce full metal gear servos. So I'm not concerned about that at all. If I burn one of these up or get it wet, I'll just go back and get another one or a better, more high quality one. Um, so anyway, that's what I went with on the servos. Uh, we are using a Spectrum SR515 receiver. I love these receivers. I've used many of them in the past. They were great. These are not waterproof either. It's very simple to waterproof them. I've got a video out there. Um, it's uh, Trev's Tech Tips number two, and I completely take this apart and show you guys exactly how to put the conformal coating on there and waterproof it, and then put it back together. And we are going with a Hobby Wing uh, 1080 here pretty basic everybody knows about these they're real simple very cheap for 49 bucks i mean it's the best of both worlds it's set up for crawlers it's a brushed esc to run my brushed motor and it even comes with a program card guys for free and the last thing here guys i did go ahead and go with all vanquish servo horns um, it takes a 20 millimeter servo horn for the front steering and 224 millimeter servo horns for the dig and the overdrive uh, the only bag we have left is bag I, which is going to consist of the body, the interior, the body panels, 
and the rest of the frame for the back. Now I'm going to go ahead and paint those up really good and put those together and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Uh, besides that, the tires are the only thing that are left in the back of the book. They're self-explanatory. Um, I'm not using them anyway. I bet you guys, probably a lot of you guys aren't going to use the stock tires. But if you are, it shows you how to put them together. It's not that bad. Um, that's it. Let me go ahead and slap some paint on this and we'll throw a battery in here and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Well, here's what I did with my body, guys. And yes, I did. I trimmed my fenders quite a bit. Remember, ultimately, this truck is going to be set up with two, two tires on it. So I didn't want to have to trim them after I'd painted it and disturb the paint. So I just went ahead and did it now. And ultimately, guys, I'm not even going to be running these bedsides on here. I just kind of talked myself into it so I could have them on here for the video and to also match all my paint and everything to color match it and make it work. Maybe in the future, I want to put these back on, but... For now, I'll probably take them off after this video. Um, well, a couple things I'd like to point out, guys. Number one, before you start anything here, after you're done with your trimming, if you do any trimming at all, make sure you wash all of your Lexan pieces with soap and water, and then rinse them off and let them dry. The reason why you're gonna do this is because when they press these in the molds, there's a release agent that they spray on it to have them release from the molds. Now, your paint's not gonna stick to that the best, Maybe you get lucky, maybe you don't, but I would just recommend washing it with, I wash mine with Dawn soap and water, rinse it off and let it dry all night. Then the next day you get ready to go and you're all ready for your paint. Now, the other thing I wanna point out is there is a brown sheet of paper or wax paper, whatever it is in your decal set there and it's labeled one through 12. Now, these are all of the masking tape pieces that are pre-cut out for you um, from Vanquish so that you can cover up your windows. Number one, by the way, is the front window. It is the worst one. When you take these, this masking tape off of this paper, it wants to curl up on you. It's really thin and it's very difficult to get it back apart and uncurled after that. So be careful guys, you'll just end up ruining that whole pre-cut masking tape. Um, I, I took a razor blade and started on one side and got my fingers on it and held it, worked my way to the other side and then held it with the other side of my hand and I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty difficult to do, but once you get it in there, hopefully without ripping it, you'll be good to go. It's really good masking tape, it works great. There were several places where I had it curl up on me and I couldn't get it apart the way I wanted to, so I had to use masking tape. Um, you can just put it on top of the other stuff and go, you're, you're good. Other than that, guys, I think that's about it. Let me show you what I did to this. Now, I'm not really a painter by any means, guys. I would rather rebuild your tranny all day long. But anyway, we went ahead and went with a simple gunmetal gray. Um, I did take the time right here to go ahead and mask off these hood hinges separately so that I could paint metallic black there. I think it turned out pretty good having that separation. Um, in the back, I'm not sure what you're gonna call this thing. I thought it was a toolbox at first. I'm just gonna go with that. But we went ahead and went with a pearl blue on top of that and then more of the gunmetal gray all the way around the sides. Um, I did go ahead and paint the fuel cell here red and then I used a toothpick to get all of the bolts on here with uh, metallic aluminum. We added some 3 16 nitro fuel line here. And see this little cap right here guys? Remember the red cap on the back of your axle here? You had the choice to put either the anodized red cap or you could use this black plastic one. Well, I used the red anodized one on the axle down there. Duh, why not? We had this black plastic one left over. Guess what? It fits in 3 16 nitro fuel line great. And then you can just kind of zip tie it up or if you've got a special clamp for that, I think it looks pretty good. Adds a custom touch to it. Now, I went ahead and masked off my fenders here so that I could separate this top part, making it look like it's bed liner that I have on here. I painted this underneath uh, with a flat black and then I went ahead on the outside and I very carefully trimmed the covering that you have off to protect your leg hand until you're done. Don't take that off until you're completely done by the way guys. So go ahead and trim that off and then I sprayed it with bed liner on top here. I did exactly the same thing on the front fenders. I just very carefully trimmed that around that coating and peeled that off and painted the front with bed liner underneath. Like I said it was flat black um, that's about it as far as the body goes. If you want to look underneath, I painted the entire thing metallic black so that it would kind of give that metal look to it and it all looks the same. It's nice and unison. 
Uh, moving on here, let me show you what I did with the, here's our interior. And guys, like I said, I'm not really a painter, but wow, I think I did pretty good on this and it took me a little bit of time. Here you go. I took and went with a elephant gray on the seat covers and then uh, some more of our pearl blue down the center. Um, I've got all the stickers on there. Here, this side here, you can see the, the steering wheel. And I used a toothpick again to put some more metallic aluminum in there for the bolts. I even painted the gear shifter on here, the uh, same pearl blue, so it looked good. We put all the stickers in there. And anyway, that's pretty much my interior. First time I've actually ever painted an interior, guys. I don't really care too much about painting. I'm all about performance. So I usually just throw the interior in there to protect all the components from mud. Well, this time we actually painted it and put the stickers on. So there you go. First for me. Well, here you go. I got all my electronics in here. I went ahead and added some wire loom to all my wires to try to clean up the mess and give it that nice buttoned up look. Um, I mounted my receiver up over here on the fender and my quick run 1080 ESC is over here on the side along with the switch. I did mount all of them up with uh, two-way tape. It works really good. Now guys, I'd love to tell you how to bind your receiver to your transmitter and your ESC to your receiver and calibrate them all, but that would be pointless. I know a lot of you guys are running different receivers, different ESCs and different transmitters, so that wouldn't make any sense at all for me to show you how to do it on this one. Now moving on, something that is very important, you need to set your endpoints on your steering servo, your overdrive servo, and your dig servo. Very, very important. Reason why is because you want your travel to be able to engage the gear that you're trying to get into without over engaging it. This means that it would be engaged, but your servo is pushing further than it needs to. What's going to happen is it's going to damage all the gears inside your servo and prematurely wear them out. So this is very necessary, guys. Now, once you figure out which switches you want to assign to which servo, it's going to ask you if you want a two position switch, a three position switch or linear. Okay, a two position switch is only going to give you your high and your low. A three position switch will give you your high, your low and your medium. Now, if you're running linear, it's also going to just go to the next position. Every time you hit the switch, it's going to go, it'll start out at high, you hit the switch, it's going to go to, to neutral, you hit the switch again, it's going to go to low. So what you want to do for your overdrive, if you are going to utilize the neutral position like I am, so you can have two wheel drive truck, um, you want the three position switch, and then it'll ask you if you want it to be monetary or not. I would not select your overdrive switch for monetary. Reason why, what monetary does is when you hit the switch, you push it forward, it'll engage into that gear. As soon as you let off the switch, it goes right back to where it was. So that would eliminate your neutral position and you would also have one gear selection. So what I would do is go with the three position and inhibit monetary and cyclic. Now that you've got that going on, the next thing you wanna do for the servo that you're setting up is go to travel. Very important guys, take your travel to 0% so that you're not, when you're trying to set this up, you're not already over engaging your servo and causing problems. Once you're in travel for the servo that you're on, which mine is auxiliary one right here, now what you're gonna do is go ahead and go forward, the forward motion really slow and see how my front tires aren't moving right now. That's because I have the travel set to zero. So what I'm going to want to do is go ahead and start turning up my travel. See, see the servo arm moving right here as I'm turning up the travel. I'm going to turn it up until it engages that gear. Right about here, it's going to start engaging. There you go. See it engaged. Now we want to go a little bit further than that so we know it's engaged. Now watch how far I can go. See how far I can go over there? We don't want to go that far. We want to go just just until it's engaged and then kind of split the difference between how far you can go and when it's engaged. For me, it's about, oh, I'm gonna say right there is gonna be really good. Now we can go ahead and go back to our neutral position here. There's our neutral position. See how it's not spinning? Now I'm gonna do exactly the same thing with the other side. Now it's engaging and I went ahead and turned my travel to where I need to be. See, I can adjust this back and forth that way too. So once you get them set up to where you need to be, you're good to go. Now let me show you it working here. So we can go to our low position here. 
See how the tires are spinning low in the front? I go to the next position, that's our neutral, it stops it. And then I go to the next position, that's our high. So you just want to make sure you have enough travel on each section here to engage the gear that you want. And also you're not over engaging it. Very, very important guys. Now on my dig servo, I did something a little bit different. I am going with monetary on that servo because what I want to do is I don't care about the neutral position on the rear axle. I only want it to be full-time four wheel drive or be able to use my dig. So by setting it up for monetary, now you can see that it's full-time four-wheel drive. I'll hit my switch and hold it, and it stops my dig. As soon as I let off my switch, it goes right back. Now you could pick two position, you could pick the three position and use a neutral, whatever you guys want to do. I just, I really like the monetary values on the dig switch. It makes it so much easier to be able to use while you're out there. That's just me. You guys might want something to completely different. And also, like I said, go ahead and set up your steering servos too. You want to get as much steering throw as you can left to right. It's about 49% on this or 49 degrees, which is awesome. Um, so you want to utilize that and go almost all the way to your endpoints with your physical travel, but make sure your servo is not overextending that in any direction and you'll be good to go, guys. Well, well guys, I had a great time putting this Phoenix together. This is an awesome kit, and I would recommend this to anybody that's looking for a high-performance, high-quality 10-scale crawler kit. This, this Phoenix is it. Vanquish knocked this out of the park, especially with the price they got on this. This is the cheapest Vanquish money can buy. <laughs> I mean, I know there's no electronics in it, but that's a good thing, guys. All the other RTR cars that you buy, the ready-to-run cars, come with ready-to-run electronics. They're all cheap junk. I end up taking them out every time, and they go in this box on the side where they sit forever and collect dust. Here, you're saving the money on those electronics and you're able to put in what you want the first time. So that's really awesome of Vanquish. Like I said, it's a quality kit, guys. They, they put out really good parts. Nothing was binding. I had no issues putting anything together. I did not have to trim anything. It all went together really simple. I know that the instructions were off a little bit on a couple things. No big deal. We fixed that. And I showed you guys where to grease things that they didn't grease. And I showed you a couple other things I do that they don't. That's what's gonna make this such an awesome kit. And there are a lot of accessories out there for this. There's a lot of upgrades out there for this. I will be getting a lot of them and I will continue on this series of this build so you guys know what I'm doing for all the rest of it. Like I said, eventually, here down the road not too far, we will have two twos on this. That's kind of what it's all gonna be set up for. But I had a great time and uh, I think if you guys get this kit, you'll enjoy it too. The only thing I have left to do to this is find me a really flat, straight spot, and I'm gonna run down and adjust my steering trim so it's nice and straight, and then I'm gonna take this on its maiden voyage, and I'll take you guys with me. I'll video it so you guys can see where I'm at, what it's doing, and how this crawls, and what I think of it. Guys, until next time, until the next video on this series or another one I got going on, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions or anything about this build, please do not hesitate to ask me. Leave a comment in the section down below and I will answer your question to the best of my ability. Until next time, guys, I'm Travis. You're watching Upgraded RC. Peace out.